Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to G Bears Off Grid Ways, Homestead in the Desert. Yeah, I got the air conditioning on. I got one here and one in the bedroom. And then I uh I run the ceiling fan. Um well sometimes I have all three ceiling fans on, but right now it's really not that hot today, but uh, it is above ninety. So inside of here it's definitely really uh comfortable and cool. So I wanted to show you that. We're going to go outside and see where my battery banks are at. Had a conversation with one of my subscribers today about just that. Um, he's thinking about changing his battery banks over to uh, 48 volt and uh, putting in a whole new all-in-one controller and that kind of stuff. And... Uh, well, you know, if you got the money to do it, and yeah, just go ahead. But as uh, far as I'm concerned, I prefer, oh, look at this, 13.3, uh, 13.4. 13, okay, so I've got air conditioning, sailing fans, TV, uh, re refrigerator costs running all the time, uh, security camera systems, computers, everything is running. And I still have... 13 4 on my midnight 28 amps no 28.3 amps going in okay and there's no really no, no wind only 2.4 watts 0 watts so my system as far as I'm concerned is fine tuned to right where I need it and uh, I don't know why 48 volts is so popular. Um, I did see one article on it where uh, a solar specialist said, while 48 volts is uh, um, so popular, while it's so popular, it's not the most efficient. 12 volt systems are the most efficient. Uh, that was amazing, but everybody's got their opinion. Anyway, um, happy Independence Day to all of you people in the U.S. And uh, I know Canada just had their Canada Day. Um, happy Canada Day to all the Canadians on my viewing list. And uh, we're going to take a walk out because I haven't been out to the garden yet today. I did go um, into town to the supermarket and uh, just had to pick up a few items, but I also filled up my tank. So this is the second fill up with the E85 fuel since I switched over to it. And so far on both fill ups, I've been showing that I've lost three miles per gallon on my gas mileage. Well, <coughs> excuse me. Well, what I figured out is at three mile an hour, uh, uh, three miles per gallon loss, and paying half the price of what gasoline is at the pump, I'm ahead of the game. So I'm going to stay with the E85 for a while. Let's see how my watermelons are doing. Oh, looks like the roly poly bugs are getting to it. I'll have to leave that cover off for a while. Yep. I got some onions here. I got some cabbage there. And uh, got a few yellow leaves on my apricot tree. So I'll get some fertilizer onto that. My pears are looking pretty good here. I did eat that one apple off the other tree. And it was delicious. That was an Anna apple. And just absolutely delicious. So I'm looking forward to uh, next year when I get more. And I have been eating little baby cherry tomatoes off of this plant. Got a few more getting ready to go there. And boy are those so good. Oh my word. I did have a... Uh, 
a BLT the other day with a star-bought um, tomato and it was just bland just totally bland these things you pop one of these in your mouth and take a bite, bite down on it and a flavor just bursts through your whole sensing system just outstandingly good all right corn's getting up there but uh i did soak this whole garden yes it's still plenty wet under there so everything's looking good my uh concord grapes here are looking good can't wait for those to be ready to pop in my mouth when I walk through here. This is all uh, broccoli seed, and uh, I'm hoping that some of it's going to drop down in here and give me more broccoli. So I got a broccoli flower there. It looks like it's ready to add to one of my dinners. And uh, this uh, grapevine is uh, starting to climb up and get healthy for two years it didn't do very well but this year it's uh it seems to be uh taking and uh i thought there might have been something wrong with the soil so i did do a soil sample on it with my soil test kit and uh the ph was around 6.5 so it should be okay for grapevine so i just mixed in some fertilizer and you can see some little green pellets here that's part of the uh, slow release fertilizer I put in there and uh, it came back and it's reaching for the sky my uh, Concord grape is all the way up to the top of that wood post almost just a foot below the top so that's going to be uh, reaching the trellis pretty soon and uh, my apple trees and that stuff, I just gave them a real good soaking. You see the ground is still a little wet in there. And um, you remember when I put this greenhouse in, instead of putting wire down like I did through the whole um, Garden of Eating, like you see here, this is aviary wire. Those are half-inch openings. So the critters can't tunnel under and come up through it. So anyway, I... Uh, having trouble getting a hold of this wire nowadays so I need to do something to get this um, extension put together so I can grow in there and what I was thinking was when I did the floor in there I used desert crete my invention of desert crete and uh, what it entails is using um, plastic cement mix with a uh, just the desert dirt uh, just go out there in the desert and dig some dirt up and I was mixing it uh, four shovels of dirt to three shovels of uh, and I'm talking about the little tiny spade shovel uh, three shovels of um, uh, plastic cement and just mix it dry in my mixer then I spread it out and used the board to screed it all off. Then I stood back here with a garden hose and soaked it all down. And it's hardened up to a point where the critters can't dig through it. It's just like concrete. But it does have porous abilities to it. So water doesn't puddle on it. It soaks right through it. Which is a good thing. So I got to thinking... What I might do is get my planters set up out there and I could do that in the bottoms of each one of the planters because I build my planters up like two foot tall like this and I don't need that much soil to grow this stuff but I do like it up high so I don't have to bend over as I'm getting older bending over is getting to be more of a chore so this way I can stand up right here and you see I can just reach right over to my pepper plant and I could work in a stand-up position I don't have to get down on my knees to get in harvesting stuff out of the garden so um, I'll be doing the same thing out there and in the bottoms before I put the good soil in 
I always put in my compost for my compost pile, which never gets a lot of water. I can't waste water on the compost pile. And we haven't been getting enough rain to keep that wet and help it break down. So I'm gonna put, I put that in at the bottom along with some tin cans that I've put through my fire pit. You burn all the impurities like any plastics or anything that the paper labels that are on it, all that stuff burns off of the tin cans. And that gives you slow release iron in your garden soil because that's gonna take a while to break down. Then I throw in my um, eggshells and banana peels and all that stuff on top of that. And uh, then I can put the cheapest garden soil stuff I can find on top of that. And then I put um, cardboard, just regular cardboard boxes, whatever I have stored up from stuff I've gotten in the mail and things like that. I flatten those all out and I put a layer of that down. And then I put about 12 inches of um, garden soil on top of that. And then I give it a good soaking. And uh, that'll break down. Now, before I started planting this year, remember, I brought this, all of this was brought right back up to the tops of those boards. And you can see how it's broken down and settled. Well, that's because there's a lot of, lot of red worms in the garden. And they break that soil down. Now this is this type of garden soil can be used as mulch or garden soil because it's got the big wood chips. But um, every year I turn that and mix the big chips down into the soil and they'll break down and give me natural nutrients in my soil. So that's what we're doing. So look at this, got tomatoes on the plants and I wanna address one thing. Okay, on this one, this is called blossom end rot. And that is caused by a number of things. It could be overwatering, it could be underwatering, or inconsistent watering, which I doubt because it's only this plant that's getting it. The other thing it can be is a lack of calcium. Now I did plant the uh, in the hole, I did put the eggshell just like I'd, I did with all the other tomato plants, but um, there's something going on with this one plant. And when you do see one of these or more of, than one on your plant, you wanna take them off. Don't leave them on there. Um, they're not gonna be any good to you. Uh, they, could, they could turn red and you can cut off that bottom and still eat the other part of it. But leaving it on the plant is going to help spread whatever is causing that to the other fruit on the plant. So take them off. Throw them in your compost pile or do like I do and toss them into the chickens. And I only have one to toss in, but uh, the chickens will have fun off, the, off of that, chasing each other around to see who gets to uh, peck into it first. So anyway, that's all I have for today, everybody. Again, th thanks for joining me, and uh, happy Independence Day, 4th of July. And I was going to do a video on Saturday, and I was going to start it off with Saturday in the park. I think it was the 4th of July, but it wasn't 4th of July on Saturday. It's on Monday this year. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining me. G Bear reminding you, thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and share. That's an important part. We're doing really well on subscribes. And I want to keep it going that way. Thank you all for your consistent patronage to my channel. And I hope I keep on earning your subscriptions. This is G-Bear signing off.